Hey everyone. So today's video, we're going to be going over the Battle Pass hero, which is Arlo. Uh, he's actually a pretty good hero. The thing is, is he's somewhat been power crept, <laughs> um, but he's still very strong. And if you are going to purchase the uh, Battle Pass, uh, I do think he is a pretty... He's definitely been one of the better heroes that they put in this uh, in a while. So I uh, just want to talk about him a little bit today. And uh, we'll go from there. So Arlo used to be like when Rift of Chaos came out, right? There were basically two two teams. There was the one with Jocasta and, you know, using like Light Twin to get the most damage out of your Rosalai um, and try and make that work. And then on top of that, before Ackerley came out, you needed to sub Jocasta between um, the Water Rift and the Earth Rift. So this was kind of hard. So then they had Arlo come out. Now Arlo was a way to actually beat Rift of Chaos 3 because Earth was kind of the bottleneck at, at that time. Um, along with Fire, but Fire was still achievable and still is to this day just with Bachi as your main DPS. Um, but uh, I think in the past you needed like an A5 uh, Poros if you just wanted to do like all RGB. But anyway, bes that's beside the point. Arlo was amazing because uh, the Earth Rift has a mechanic that we'll talk about here in this little showcase where the more uh, debuffs that it has on it, the less damage that it does. So when Arlo was introduced, you had a, another route to go other than with the counterattack route, which is what we'll talk about. So on his trait, what he does is it says when an ally applies Ignite in their own turn, it additionally applies one stack of Ignite to the primary target for two turns. So this says ally, but it also means him too. So anytime he applies one stack of Ignite, he'll also apply an additional stack along with all of the other uh, heroes. So it's, it's pretty impressive. He pairs really well with people like Bachelard and things like that who put up tons of Ignites. The reason why Arlo was like really, really strong was his A5 allowed you to uh, build your heroes all damage and you didn't need focus um, because his Ascended effect allows the Ignites not to be resisted. Now, in the past, this was an extremely strong trait but it's, like I said, has been power crept because there's two places that Arlo is used. One is in Rift of Chaos, and then the other is in Guild vs. Environment. He is extremely strong as a boss killer um, with a specific Ignite team in Rift of Chaos. So he's really, really good there. Um, but from a Rift of Chaos standpoint, I mean, Flaming Myla has completely, you know, power crept him. She she requires just like minimal, minimal um, investment and you can get to, you know, Rift of Chaos 1 and 2 very easily. Rift of Chaos 3, I think you do need a booked Flaming Myla uh, along with like Mauricio if you don't have any other, uh, you know, light and dark, you know, those OP light and dark heroes. But anyway, um, so the nice thing is, is the power creep from Arlo's perspective is actually kind of good because this ascension really is no longer needed if you have Flaming Myla. Um, if you don't have Flaming Myla and you're never planning on really getting her or using you know, your hero matrixes on her um, and you want to A5 Arlo, you can. That team still does exist and it's still very strong. Um, but I will say that Arlo is strong without A5. He just needs books. So let's talk about the rest of his kit. But again, Ignite is is his main thing and a long time ago they actually changed ignite where uh in the past it wasn't able to crit but now it does so you can do crit damage with uh with ignite so his basic ability deals 120 percent damage to an enemy and applies one stack of ignite to them for two turns and then if he is booked uh, he'll deal an additional stack of ignites, so his basic will then put up three ignites, right? So you get the two stacks of ignites from his basic, and then you get the extra stack from his trait. He has a passive ability that says when attacked, if the target has at least four stacks of ignite, it reduces the damage taken by 50% 
and then launches a counterattack with the special ability. So if they if the enemy has four stacks of ignite, he'll take 50% less less damage and then launch a counterattack with this ability here where it deals 150% damage to the enemy and then applies another stack of ignite which is actually two, right? Because of his trait. Oh, actually, sorry. I think that says uh, in their own turn. So the counterattack actually won't. It's just one additional stack. Sorry. And then with each stack of Ignite, it increases the damage dealt by 10%. And then the damage bonus is increased to 15% instead of 10% if he's booked. So uh, you, you should... Compare this to someone like Abaddon. Abaddon does additional damage based on the amount of uh, debuffs on the enemy, and we all know how strong Abaddon is. He is just an Ignite version of Abaddon. So, uh, very strong. His damage output when he's booked is similar to Abaddon. Um, I still think Abaddon is a little bit better, especially if he's Ascended 2. Now, if you have an A1 Abaddon, versus arlo uh arlo probably wins that battle i don't have any data to back that up so i mean that's all just a uh, hypothetical so don't take my word for that but uh i would think that this in an ignite team you're if you have a booked arlo versus a booked a1 abaddon arlo i would think out damages but again that's all hypothetical and then his ultimate ability says gains crit damage up to for two turns and launches three attacks on the enemy, dealing 180% damage in total. And then it has a 100% chance of applying three stacks of ignite for two turns. And then each stack of ignite increases damage dealt by 15% and that goes up to 20%. So this hits very, very hard and it scales really well. Um, for anyone that's familiar, with guild versus environment there is an ignite team out there which i will showcase like in rift of chaos to kind of give you an idea um but you can get your stacks of ignite up to 99 and then arlo comes in and he is just smacking for a lot of damage on this ultimate because it does 180 percent damage but then it just increases his damage out by 15 percent for each stack of ignite it is crazy it's crazy. So um, very, very strong hero. Um, like I said, just a little overshadowed by Flaming Mylan now in uh, Rift of Chaos, um, but still, you know, top tier in Guild versus Environment, but that's really the only place that he's utilized um, nowadays, but still very, very good there. So I just have him in some broken gear. I guess I do have a two piece set of speed. These are his uh, stats. He's not booked or anything. Uh, and he does have A2, which is attack and then defense. He gets the A3 speed, which will help with your speed uh, requirements on Rift of Chaos. But again, I only use him in Guild vs. Environment, and even using him in Guild vs. Environment is kind of a stretch. <laughs> um, I am definitely towards the bottom uh, tier of hitters for Guild vs. Environment. I'm kind of just there for pathfinding and stuff. Um, but yeah. Uh, if you book him, I think he's a solid investment, especially if you really care about PVE. He has no use really in PVP, um, but he is, you know, top tier in, uh, you know, in, in Guild versus Environment or Ruin of the Gods. I actually want to see if we have uh, anyone running that Ignite team in here. I don't know if people are using him in the Light team. I think that requires specific heroes yeah that kind of uh oh, he's not going to be used in water and then from a fire perspective yeah so this kind of team obviously this guy has an a6 abaddon so that's going to be a little bit stronger than an arlo <laughs> um but yeah if you were to sub in a arlo um if you didn't have the a2 abaddon he'd probably be a pretty strong option but, uh, you know, most of my clan members here have, you know, an A2 Abaddon. But that's what that team would be. So let's just do a quick little showcase and then I'll get out of here. Um, so for Rift of Chaos, you know, we're just going to do stage 7 right now. Because of the speed requirements, I don't want to build Arlo to get above the speed requirements. But this is basically the team, right? Um, 
you would use Zitlin in here to, you know, help with the guild versus environment stuff just to do additional damage. But the whole point is to uh, use Bachelard and uh, Felidia here to try and increase the amount of Ignite stacks on the boss and allow your Arlo to just do maximum amount of damage on his ultimate and then on his counter attack. So we'll show you what that looks like a little bit, see the type of damage output, and then we'll get out of here. Oh, and I will talk about the mechanic from this boss real quick. Um, so I believe it's right around here. Uh, huge damage. Okay, yeah. So it says damage is evenly distributed against all enemies and reduced by 5% per one negative effect on this hero to as low as 50%. And this goes up even higher in the higher levels. I believe it gets up to 80% maybe. So with each stack of ignite, it counts as one negative effect. So if you have 10 stacks of ignite, you're going to decrease the amount of this ultimate on what it does by 50%, which is really big. Um, and then on top of that, Arlo also reduces the damage he takes if uh, the boss has 50% or more health. So Felidia in this composition, um, she allows, uh, so when an attacking enemy with ignite, it has a 50% chance to reduce her ultimate ability cooldown. And then the trigger chance is increased to hundred percent if, uh, the enemy has four or more stacks. So anytime that she is attacking the boss, if there's four or more stacks on him, this is increased to hundred percent of decreasing her ultimate ability cooldown. And what her ultimate does is it deals 200% damage to an enemy and it increases the duration of all ignites on them. So again, similar to like Abaddon where he's just increasing and ticking up. Um, also, you have heroes like Aaron and Maeve whenever they're paired together. You increase the damage over time uh, stacks. So it allows you to pump out additional damage out of Arlo that is based on his ignite stacks, the amount of ignite stacks. Um, and then of course it just also applies ignite. So as we know with Arlo, right? Whenever uh, one of your allies applies ignite, it will apply an additional stack. So whenever Felidia applies one ignite stack, which you'll see here, you'll actually see two if it didn't get resisted. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so let's try uh, Bachelard. So Bachelard puts an ignite stack uh, for each of these. But uh, actually, we won't use this one. We'll use this one. So he'll apply one stack of Ignite. And uh, since Arlo is on your team, he will apply an additional stack. So there's the there's the two. And then he attacked again because they had a debuff. So he attacked again with his basic. So now he has four stacks, which is really important. So if he has four stacks of Ignite, the damage reduced to Arlo is 50%. Here, Arlo is going to go in and uh, he'll put crit damage up too, and then he's gonna deal an additional 60% damage um, because he has four stacks of Ignite, and then he's also gonna apply three stacks of Ignite for two turns. So there you go. So he applied three stacks plus the one additional um, from his trait. So that was his counterattack for, uh, so you saw his counterattack there. Pr pretty, pretty good numbers. So as this increases, um, the number's just gonna go up. So this boss has a mechanic though with the more, the, the higher amount of debuffs it has on itself, um, the higher its resistance goes. So that's why Arlo's trait of having it not be resisted was really important for um for rift of chaos 3. so uh, i'm not going to finish this but the whole point of this is to get the stacks of ignite as high as you possibly can and then arlo goes in there and he just scales you know tremendously but we'll talk about uh the rift of chaos bosses mechanic here real quick and then uh, I'll get out of your hair 
So, if you look at this down here, on stage 12, uh, this goes all the way up to 80%. Like I said, that's really important. But the other part as to why Arlo's A5 was important was, uh, let's see here, right here. It says the converted defensive return at the end of the turn. This is where he takes all of his defense and then turns it into attack. That's why the counterattack was good. But then it says gains 30% bonus resistance when an enemy applies damage over time effects. So he gets just additional 30% bonus resistance every time that he has a damage over time effect. So his resistance gets pretty high. Um, but if you have Arlo Ascended, then it didn't matter. But again, you really don't need the A5 anymore, especially if you have Flaming Myla. Um, and that's the moral of the story. So he's good in guild versus environment. Other than that, um, he's just outclassed. But anyway, uh, that's a quick little rundown of the Battle Pass hero in Arlo. So that's all I got for you today. Uh, I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.